Hello and welcome to Real Monsters. I'm your host SK Barrett and with me joining me is Wes Hobrick. Hello, hello, hello. Joining you again. One more time. And I do want to clarify <laughs> for those who are unfamiliar, we are not the actual real monsters. We talk about <laughs> other real monsters. That is true. That is what we do, although we may inadvertently try to groom you at some time, as was pointed out last week in the chat. Yeah. I don't have the details worked out for my, uh, you know, upcoming cult, so that may fall into this category someday. I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps. So, Indeed. tonight, we are talking about not a serial killer. Nope. But, we are but looking I, at a mass killer. Yeah, a mass killer. One time. Well, that's often the case with mass killers. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, kind of by definition, once you get down to it. Um, then I guess the only thing that really differentiates the mass killers from the spree killers, although some people use them interchangeably, is the um, amount of time in between the people they're right, killing. Right. Which, of course, also differentiates them from the serials who have a very long cooling off period in between. But the spree would be the second. They're having a little bit longer, and then the mass killers, there's close to no time in between when they kill people. Right, exactly. Okay, so why is this one so, you know, why is this so, I don't know, what's a good word for it, popular? You know, the popularity of the DeFeo murders, and this is Ronald Butch DeFeo, who was 23 in 1974 and killed his entire family with a high-powered hunting rifle. Um, it's undoubtedly, the popularity there is not so much from the murders themselves as it is from the people who moved into the house in question after the oh. murders, about two years after, okay. in fact. Um that would be the Lutz family, whom we I did put some pictures in for our slideshow when it comes up. But they're the ones who claimed they had experiences in the house in Amityville, Long Island, New York, in question. And a um, writer by the name of Jay Anson actually wrote a book about it. Um, and it basically turns out that a lot of their experiences, if not all of them, were hyped up for the sake of popularity, for the sake of Hollywood, for the sake of selling the book. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, I don't... And, lot, and TV shows and movies and all kinds of stuff. Oh, absolutely. I'm not sure how many of those would be around if it wasn't for the 1979 movie on it, though. With uh, Margaret Kidder and James Brolin. Okay. But in, you know, with that, it's interesting. I don't know if I would go so far as to say that the area is not haunted, that there's nothing there. I mean, I don't know what you believe on ghosts, period, with that. Yeah. SK? Um, uh, the jury's out as far as I'm concerned. I have not had any real experiences that would just, you know, persuade me that ghosts are a thing. And the reason that I say I'm not 100% on the house in Amityville is because I have actually interviewed some people who have worked on some of the Amityville movies. And that includes the newest one called the Amityville murders, which is in theaters right now and actually details the DeFeo slayings versus the haunting. Okay. But the people that I've talked to have said, in their opinion, there's something there. And they've actually visited, you know, the house in Amityville and done extensive research for their roles. Um, one of them was Diane Franklin, who played in the second Amityville movie and is also in the Amityville murders. 
She talks a bit about it in this interview that I did with her, which I will put in the chat. And then I also interviewed the director of the Amityville Murders. We didn't get so much into the spiritual side of that, but his is interesting, too, for different reasons. So I'll go ahead and post that as well. Cool. But yeah, the ghost thing, unfortunately, has kind of overshadowed the more real horror of Amityville. And that's what we're going to be getting into today. The DeFeo murders. Cool. All right, so I'm going to put up some maps. And we're going to, because, you know, not everybody knows where Amityville is. Right. So we're going to start with the wide shot to give a to give context of where this is, and it's in it's in New York State, Long Island. Mm-hmm. So one twelve Ocean Avenue being the address, which is interesting. A lot of the uh, murder sites don't, or murder related sites don't often give exact addresses. Yeah, they usually don't. Um, but yeah, and that, you know, this is an upper middle class community. Um, I'm sure it probably still is being on Long Island, although I personally have never been there. Well, you know, you can tell from this map, you know, uh -huh. you, you got swimming pools and boats and docks. So this is, this is, yeah, these, this is a nice neighborhood. Yeah. Most definitely. And that's the way it was in 74 when the DeFeos were murdered. Um, so we do have pictures of them as well. They lived at 112 Ocean Avenue. The um, A family total of, what was that, seven people counting Butch? I always yes. get that mixed up. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a... Family, you know, two parents. He had Louise DeFeo. That's actually who um, Diane Franklin, who I interviewed, plays in the new movie. And you have um, Ronald DeFeo Sr., who was a uh, middle-class car dealer. Sold used cars. Are... No, it wasn't used. I'm sorry. He sold new Buicks for a living. So he provided pretty well for the DeFeo family there. Um, Butch, who committed the murders, was their oldest child. He was 23 in 1974. And then we have the victims all down there. So, and, so he uh, killed his mother and father and four siblings. Correct. Wow. With... A um, 35 caliber Marlin hunting rifle that belonged to his dad. And, <clears throat> you know, it's interesting when you get into motive, there's quite a bit of um, anecdote about DeFeo Sr. beating um, Ronald DeFeo Jr. Butch quite a bit. He was a man with the temper, and he often would take it out on his wife and then his oldest son. Got a lot of the brunt of it. And this caused the um, family, as Butch was growing up and becoming, I guess, kind of a large kid who was also physically awkward, to um, send him to a few psychiatrists to try to get this anger that they didn't understand under control. And um, Butch recalls with that having... Um, you know, every thought that, hey, I don't need this, I shouldn't be here, etc. <laughs> he didn't so, think he, he needed help, huh? No, he didn't. But he everybody else did. didn't. <laughs> it, it, basically. And, you know, the other thing that um, the family tried to do after they... Um, would take him into the psychiatrist. They also tried bribing him with expensive shit. Um, like, for instance, one thing they gave him was a $14,000 speedboat. In exchange for what? Good behavior? <laughs> I uh, guess it was just in exchange for basically saying, 
okay, can you calm down a little bit? Although I'm not sure how the incentives would work there. Right. Um, but, you know, it's um, interesting when you get to after the night of the murders and people doing investigating, there's a lot of conspiracies that popped up around this. And one of them was actually a journalist who claimed to have um, spoken to a DEA agent who was supposedly watching the house the night the DeFeos were killed. And the reason that he was supposedly watching it was because Butch was using that speedboat to smuggle drugs. Uh, interesting. <laughs> As far as I know, there's no proof of that assertion, but it is an assertion nonetheless. Um, but yeah, I mean, Butch as a child was, you know, also awkward. He was bullied quite a bit in school. And I suppose it just sort of drove those problems more into his subconscious. You know, those mental issues and that anger that would come with it. Um, hmm. Yeah. And then I think once you get into um, November, November 13th, 1974, the night or the day of the murders, you also have drugs being thrown in as a further fuel. Um, Butch used heroin, marijuana, LSD. And I have no doubt that that was a contributor, but, you know. Was he tested at the time? Do you know? Um, that? You know, I don't think that they had to test him. It was pretty uh, well in the open. Butch had around um, Amityville the reputation of being the bad seed in the DeFeo family. In fact, that's what a lot of the townspeople told investigators um, okay. when they were looking at the murders. But the night of November 13th, Butch goes room to room executing his family members with a 35 caliber hunting rifle. And after he did this, when investigators came into this big-ass Dutch colonial that their house was in Amityville, do we have one of the out, outer shots so people can get an idea of just how big of the it house? is? Yeah, I thought I sent a couple to fit in there. Um but, yeah, let me. I I don't have uh, one isolated, but let me get set that up. Okay, I'll just keep talking while you do that. But yeah, they owned a Dutch colonial, which was just you know it's a big big house, and he goes room to room with this rifle, and all the victims, all six, were found on their stomachs. There was virtually no evidence that any of them had moved. And there's also no evidence that any of them heard the shots that happened that night. Oh, really? And for people's perspective here who have never shot a 30-30 rifle, I did a little bit of research on this. And the test that this magazine had for the decibel reading on it was 156. Which is about, that's, I think... That's really loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and for perspective, again on that, it's about 16 decibels louder than a jet engine starting off. Wow. And it's also about um, 36 decibels higher than the threshold at which most people feel pain from a loud noise. But... He fired eight shots in that house, and there's a blueprint of it in a side view. Eight shots that night, and nobody stirred. And on top of it, the neighbors didn't hear anything that night, but the DeFeo's dog barking. Wow. Um, yeah, one of these coming up will have a floor plan. And... So it looks like all the bedrooms are on the upper floor. Mm hmm So and this was November, so the windows would have been closed. Yeah, it's a good size house. It is. I mean it really is. And 
That's the thing that always floors me about that is that nobody heard those shots. Because I mean, look at how close together the houses are. Too. Yeah, right. I mean, and, you, you know, I. Oh, you, go ahead. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody's been in a situation where they've had somebody that close. You can hear them, people yelling from that far apart away. Oh, absolutely. And obviously they heard a dog, too. Right. That night. Um, But. It's just, it's freaking incredible. And there was no evidence at autopsy that any of the DeFeos were drugged. So you can scratch that as a reason. And there's also no evidence that Butch used a silencer on that rifle. And even if he had used the silencer, although I don't know if the technology would have existed in the day to get a good one, it wouldn't have limited that noise very much. Yeah. And it really wouldn't. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a loud sound. And six shots at least eight. Eight, eight shots. total. Eight total shots. And um you know, it also had me wondering with that. I've never studied acoustics professionally. I don't mm-hmm. know much about the physics of them. But wouldn't you think in the way that a Dutch colonial is designed you would get some reverberation? Yeah, uh, you certainly would. You know, the walls would would vibrate and carry sound that way. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, and they, I I had a chance to talk to a guy who owned a uh, a, a studio with uh, practice rooms for bands. Uh huh. About a dozen of them in this in this facility, and. He was telling me how he kept the rooms quiet, you know, even though they had AC and heating going in. And, mm-hmm. he, and he said, well, he just put a lot of bends in the pipes, he said, because sound doesn't like to go around corners. Mm-hmm. Well, so, there you go. Um, so in this case, you know, you look at these, um, at this floor plan, and yeah, the you know, the the sound in an adjacent room would be reflected through the wall, but mm-hmm. not not out the door and around the corner, but but that would go to the ones across the hallway, right? I would think so, definitely. And still, there's just no record of you know them moving much of anything. Now, some people. Well, um, they were it, they you know they were they were all in their beds still. Right, right, and there wasn't any evidence that he had maybe shot them somewhere else and moved them to that position. But right. yeah, you know, he goes through and he somehow does that, and this evidence in there with that has led some people to suggest that there was a second gunman. Um, And in fact, that was one of the many hypotheses, one of the many ideas that Bush proffered after he was arrested, Um, which the way that he was arrested was November the 13th at around 630. He runs into a bar in Amityville basically screaming that my family's been shot, my family's been shot, and a bunch of the men follow him back to his house with the cops later on. And the first thing that Butch proffered with that, the first theory of the crime that he told them was that the mob killed my family. The mafia. Uh, Which... They don't typically and, use a lever action rifle. <laughs> That's not their no, gun of choice. <laughs> no, they really don't. Although, um, besides that, it might have been somewhat plausible because they did have a um, uncle who worked for the um, Genovese crime family in New York. But that was one of the theories that Butch told them about, and it was the first one. And after they picked him up, he went into a whole litany of them over the years. Um, Drug use made me do it. Um, 
or he's just a liar. His anger made him do it. One witness recalled how Butch had held a shotgun up to the head of a young man during a hunting party and watched, what? quote, stony-faced as the man turned white with fear. No real reason, he just did it. And then there was um, another instance there where Butch had actually put a rifle up to his dad's head when he was off on one of his um, temper tantrums, and I'm quite sure he was beating Louise during it. He put the rifle up to his head, he pulled the trigger, there was nothing in it. So, jeez, you know, and it was also at this time that a psychologist diagnosed Butch with antisocial personality disorder. You think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, making him, you know, a psychopath. Yeah. So, um, but now the alternate theory that he proposed, even though you really can't trust much of anything that he says, the alternate theory that did actually make a little bit of sense with the um, with the findings, with the forensics, was that Dawn killed them, and Butch only killed Dawn in self-defense. Um, and the theory was that Dawn was in... Dawn, his sister, was incensed over DeFeo Sr., her father, not letting her see her boyfriend in Florida. And in this narrative, Butch describes a friend with a cult who followed Butch and killed the family at about 1 a.m. that night. Um, and this was after they had gotten high. Um, and let's see, Butch himself claimed the murders of Ron DeFeo Sr. and Louise and then said that Dawn and this other person killed the three children, which in turn prompted Butch to kill Dawn. Um, that they shot the children separately. What was... What did he say the motive for them doing that was? Uh, basically, Dawn being angry at DeFeo Sr. over her boyfriend. So, because of that, killed the siblings? I don't get the... I, that I didn't quite get either, but in that narrative, it was her killing the siblings that put that pissed um, Butch off, and he killed her. And one of the um, bits of evidence there that supposedly could point to this is the powder burns that were on Dawn. Um, you have one expert at Butch's trial who said those were from just the muzzle from him shooting her as close as he did. Yeah. And then you had another one who said it could be from her having fired a gun. So, <laughs> dueling experts on that point. Um, Interesting. But, yeah, I mean, exactly. The unburnt gunshot residue. That was um, the prosecution's expert, Alfred De La Pena, thought this could have occurred as a result of the muzzle flash when she was shot, but then the defense thought it could be from her with the gun. And there's another interesting part of that Dawn scenario. Butch described several times um, the night of the shooting where he was watching TV in a drug-induced haze when a strange black hooded figure came to him and handed him a rifle and urged him to kill his family. Um, the neighbors said that Dawn often wore a black snorkel style coat, but this also gets into what I was saying with the DEA agent. Yeah. The, um, this DEA contact supposedly of journalist Rick Moran um, said that they had the house under surveillance that night because of a suspicion Butch was smuggling drugs in his speedboat. Supposedly, this DEA guy observed Dawn in a black coat fleeing the house with the rifle. Um, again, that's not backed up. It's more or less an anonymous source. But it is something that has been proffered. So They never found any actual DEA agent to verify that, <laughs> I'm guessing? Not that I know of. No, I think he's pretty well stayed anonymous with that. But, um, 
you know, Butch also was trying to play up that mental illness um, aspect of it at a different time. And he said that he heard the voices of his family in his head telling him to kill his family, which is kind of weird. But like I said, that's the thing with DeFeo. He's put forward so many different theories that you really can't believe much of anything he says. Right. But uh, yeah. at any rate with that, he did get six um, consecutive 25 to life terms in a New York prison. So he was convicted. Well, that seems that seems like the right way to go. By the way, if you mm-hmm. hear voices in your head, LSD may not be the right drug to go where <laughs> you're <around> taking. <laughs> no shit. You know, and that's the interesting thing there with the mental illness side of that. Did the drugs bring that out of him? Right. I wonder. Yeah. Or was it has to some been known degree? to happen, right? It definitely has, especially the hallucinogens. Absolutely. Yeah, Ian says in the chat that only one person was responsible. I tend to agree with that. I don't think that there's anybody else besides Bush that was there. Although a lot of people, a lot of investigators, still believe that there was a second gunman. Um, whether or not that was Dawn becomes the operative question. So, so. T- so tell me more about the gun and how that was found, where it was found, um, who, who, who did it belong to? What do we the know gun, about the gun? The gun was a thirty-five caliber Marlin hunting rifle, a lever action, which I think that we put a picture of that in there too. If I'm not mistaken, or I sent one. Yep. Hold on. I was letting the dog outside, so I'll go, I'll go <laughs> pop that up. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the gun itself actually belonged to Ron DeFeo Sr. For those who don't know what, uh, uh, hold on, I got to find the. There's the Lutzes on screen right now. There's the there's the gun. If uh, yeah, so it's all lever action is what you think of as a cowboy rifle, right? And there are more mo- more manufacturers and models than just the you know the famous Winchester. Yep, there are quite a few and lots of calibers. Eesh. And they're yep. a lot and they're fun to shoot. <laughs> I gotta say <laughs> that. They are really fun. I've never shot a rifle that big, but I have shot a three fifty seven. So Yeah. Well, so mm-hmm. this would be the same kind of thing with a longer barrel. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, and even with the um the decibel reading that I was talking about, the one fifty six. I did a little bit deeper research there, and during the 70s, investigators pegged the decibels of the gun at 140, which is still, you know, way above the thresholds that I was talking about. Right. So, I just, that's the thing that I always find most interesting there is, how did they not hear it? Yeah. Uh, You know... I guess the what time of night was this supposedly happening? This was late at night, and I was man, I should have notated that. I mean, if it's late enough and people are asleep, and you 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 know, depending on how deeply you're asleep, and if you've got like TV on or something, it's possible that you might hear it and not know that you heard it. Um, if there's wind or who knows what, right? You know, that's one thing that had um, crossed into my mind, kind of going off what you said there as a possibility. Maybe they had something that made them all congenitally heavy sleepers. 
Well, I'm talking more about neighbors as opposed to the. Um, That's true. As opposed to the. Now, inside the house is a different story. That is a whole different game. Because yeah. that's a lot of noise very close at hand uh, to not hear, to wake oh, up. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. As the coroner said with that, the report was so loud it could, and he said, wake the dead. Yeah. So. There's a I mean, reason that is why weird. you wear hearing protection when you fire these kinds of weapons. Absolutely. Oh, most definitely. And, and, and saying, here's my take on the Lutz family. We honestly would not be talking about this had it not been for them. They moved in and tried to bank on it. I agree with you on the Lutzes, Ian. Um, I think that we would still be talking about it because the crime itself is interesting. But, um, yeah, there's no doubt that they tried to bank on it and that their account in Anson's book is more or less bullshit, as we know now. Yeah. That's why I didn't. That's why we weren't spending much time on them. I just threw one picture in because a lot of people would connect it to the movie. So was the rifle? Did the rifle belong to the family? The okay. rifle was Ron DeFeo Senior's rifle. Okay. Right. So, again, that doesn't sound like you know that's a, a criminal that's uh, going in to shoot somebody usually brings his own tools yeah he usually does and this kind of strikes at another possible motive for this some people have speculated that butch was trying to get at the insurance money that his dad and his mom had uh, but so the High-speed boat drug dealing wasn't going so well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess not. But, you know, and a lot of people around him did describe him not just as the bad seed, but also the entitled kid mm. as he was growing up. Gotcha. So, you know, maybe greed was a factor, but if I'm not mistaken... The insurance policies weren't worth that much money to begin with. That's one thing I was looking for, was that exact figure. Okay. And, and wasn't able to find it yet. Well, another tip for people. Um, you don't get to collect on the insurance if you're the cause of death. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The insurance is really... Insurance companies really frown on paying out under those circumstances. Yep. They definitely do. It you know, it's prob I mean, we're never gonna know the full truth of that, but if I were a betting man, I would be thinking that it was mental illness mixed with a generous degree of sociopathy on Butch DeFeo's part. Plus possible drugs. Yeah. Exactly. Exacerbated by that. You know, because to me, it looks like the kind of thing that would happen under the influence of, like, LSD. Oh, definitely. I mean, it, I don't know if it caused it to happen in an acute nature like that, to where one night he just thought, well, hell, I'm going to shoot him. Or whether it contributed more over the long haul with it. Yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking like, you know, that was, uh, you know, he was, he was tripping at the time. Mm hmm. Oh, that's highly likely considering the amount he was using. Mm hmm. Definitely. But. Yeah, but, the, you know, okay, so. Yeah, it's still boggling how you could go room to room and shoot six people and none of them wake up. Yeah. I mean, and the hu husband and wife in the same bed, for God's sakes. Absolutely. Although, to be fair, um, it, probably, it wouldn't have mattered if one of them woke up Yeah. when they were in no, the bed I'm, themselves. But, yeah. I know, but still, I mean... 
there's a little bit of time between bang, you know, eject, cock, bang. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a second or two where somebody could have not been shot in the back, maybe, or shot in the side or something. Or in the right. front, something besides being shot in the back, which was all of, the, all of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, and they were all found on their stomachs when they went through the house. So, yeah, yeah I mean, the time wouldn't be enough to where you could do something meaningful to maybe get the gun or get away, but yeah, you, you would, would still be up. Yeah, you'd move. You'd do something. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. that's that's really that's very curious. It is. And I mean some people use that to point to the paranormal too, but I wouldn't go that far. You know. Say, oh, it was the ghost that made them not hear it. And no, we just don't know why they didn't hear it. Yeah. And if you were planning on shooting them all and wouldn't you and, and you wouldn't you get them all together? You would think so, right? I mean, get like, them all in a central location, right? And then it's just bang, 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 and wow, it's just weird. It is, I mean, it's patently bizarre. Hmm. Yeah, I, I gotta I gotta say that this is not this does not sound like a hit. <laughs> no, no, I would think that had the mob done it, it would have been a lot cleaner for one. You they, know, yeah, and they more efficient. They wouldn't use the family's own weapons because they you can't count on that, right? No, not at all. What if it backfires? What if they're you know, what if the gun up? jams? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and and where what well, what did he what did Butch use as an alibi? Where did he say he was at at the time? I don't think that he really had an alibi. Um, I mean, he probably had something thought up when he went into Henry's bar, you know, screaming right. and flailing his arms, but. Um, I'm not aware of him telling the police any. Besides, you know, just saying, oh, the mob killed my family is his first excuse. And, you know, who knows? Maybe they just sort of wrote that off as, oh, he's, you know, in shock. Because something awful just happened. But, you know, I'm also sure that the a lot of the cops probably also had the idea that he's, you know, the entitled bad seed of Ron DeFeo. Mm. So maybe they were more skeptical of him by nature. I'm not sure. But either way, he will most likely rot in jail, having been in jail for basically 45 years now. Do they have, they didn't have uh, uh, gunshot residue testing in those days, right? So they couldn't tell if he had fired a weapon or not. I thought they did in the 70s. Hmm. Instead, remember with um, Dawn, they had basically done one okay. because, of, because of the powder marks on her. Um, and to answer... Patty's question in the chat. They did drug test the um, victims. I'm not sure if they drug tested Butch after they hauled him in, but they did drug test the victims, and they found nothing. And this despite the fact that once um, the police were zeroing in on Butch as their main suspect, he said that they gave, that he gave them barbiturates that night. But again... The coroner found nothing when they did the autopsies. Interesting. Um, and maybe the mafia did do it, Patty. I don't know, although honestly, I doubt it happened that way. 
You know, one of the <laughs> one of the problems if you're if you're butch uh, is that you know you've led a life that's gonna make you a suspect, man. Even if you didn't mm-hmm. do it. Yep. And you know if he's got mental and drug problems or you know if he was if he was high somewhere and somebody went in and killed them all and he actually did find it and didn't do it <laughs> yeah he, you know it may explain why he's got all these different stories because he doesn't he might not even know what's true yeah oh absolutely i mean it definitely puts you in that position where that's going to happen um, and like Ann said in the chat, he admitted that he had taken a bath, redressed any detail where he had discarded the evidence. That definitely shows um, premeditation, rationality yeah. on his part. That's a great okay. point, too. Good point. But, you know, even with that, you know, and you go further into his trial, too. During it, he actually threatened to kill his own lawyers and kill the judge. That doesn't it, uh, help your defense any. Uh, it does if you're going to plead insanity. <laughs> ah. Which he may have, you know, wanted to do as, uh, you know, his best way out of it. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Man. Uh, yeah. I, it, again, you know. If he was innocent, he didn't help himself. Oh, not at all. And his serial... His serial lying didn't help him at all either. Right. Well, in his lifestyle leading up to that point, to where, you know, it's the kind of guy that cops love to pin things on, right? Because it makes sense to them. Yeah. I mean, it's an easy explanation. It's just the question is, was it the right explanation? I firmly believe it was. But... Yeah, yeah, I, I think so, too. But my point being that if, if you know, in an, if, from, like a, you from said, an omniscient point of view, if you could look down and go, you know what, he really, he didn't do it. Somebody else did it. But nobody's going to look at somebody else because he's such a likely suspect. Yeah, yeah, you're not doing yourself any favors with the way you were living. Yeah. Exactly. So, but, you know, I mean, I think with a lot of the investigators, they like to believe that second gunman idea because it neatly explains some of the forensics, too. You know, it just seems like it makes sense. With, um, you know, like going room to room that fast and getting them before they wake up. Right. Although the um, ballistics just point to one gun, one caliber having been fired. Which means that if, if his sister actually did do some of the killing, he had to have taken the gun away from her. Yeah. Yeah, he had to somehow have gotten it away and shot her. Right. So. In the back, just like all the others, in the bed. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That seems unlikely. Yep. Yeah, probably more than unlikely. It just... Bizarre crime, there's no doubt about it. Wow. Wow. You sure the CIA wasn't involved anywhere? Come on. (laughs) You know, I'm sure there's probably (laughs) um, conspiracy (laughs) theories to that effect. (laughs) While we're on that tangent, I'm looking on Google, DeFeo murders CIA. See what happens. (laughs) Oh, there's one on them. Oh, yeah, they used organized crime. Yeah, the CIA did. Uh, yeah, the, that's all kind of weird. I am not saying the CIA controlled Butch to commit the murders. That is a verbatim quote from AmityvilleFact.com. Well, 
must be true then. See, it says, I have read in a few places his parents took him to get help for his anger issues. Does anyone know the name of the doctor they took him to? One of the things I find interesting. Do not read anything into it, as I clearly have zero facts. Well, I'm glad you admit it. <laughs> <laughs> Is the fact that there was an insane asylum in the town. The place was using mind control techniques along with LSD. It is well-documented stuff. In the early 70s, places to take your kid to seek help were not on every street corner, LOL. Since this mind control and LSD therapy was being used during the same time frame that the DeFales were looking to help their son, I kind of am newbie-wise putting two and two together. I am not saying the CIA controlled Butch to commit the murders. By far, no. Okay, then. <laughs> Yeah, so mind control, that's a that's a whole other subject. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't seem to really work. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Deadman says, uh, I was joking, but now I wonder if it's connected with MK Ultra. Uh, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> MK Ultra was uh uh was that the remote viewing? And it it was experiments with LSD and uh, yeah, I, I don't remember everything that was connected. There's so many things, right? Uh, uh huh. But there was definitely well, there was definitely LSD involved, and uh, there was. There was one of the uh, CIA guys that they threw out of a hotel window and blamed it on suicide. Oh, yeah. I remember hearing that guy's story, although I can't recall his name. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, well, that was a good time. While you were talking, I accidentally unplugged my mic, so I had to plug back in. <laughs> but Good timing. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Deadman. Mr. Deadman says... Dude, MK Ultra is government testing LSD on people. Sorry, I don't keep up with my government conspiracies there. So, there's so my bad. There's so many to keep up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need a filing system and a you know some kind of rating. Oh yeah, here's a few of um, Ronnie Butch's letters found too ah yeah he has kind of I don't want to say pretty but he has kind of pretty cursive writing not too bad <laughs> better than my kids nope. I'll tell you that <laughs> <laughs> the worst <laughs> uh. yeah. you know um Talking to the director of the Amityville Murders, that was one of the hardest things they had to do for that movie. They were able to find a um, Dutch colonial in the middle of L.A. that they shot uh, it in. No kidding. Yeah. is interesting. They did quite a lot to make it look like the inside of 112 Ocean Avenue, too. You know, his movie was really good because it didn't explicitly say that it was ghosts that you know drove ron defeo to kill but he kind of took the middle line he took it being ambiguous where you don't know if it's his madness or if there's real things that are causing him to do that that is external agents causing him to kill ah. i highly highly recommend the movie if people get a chance to see it out now Cool. Go see the movie. Yep. Read, read Wes's article about the movie. I will post it again. Which the director of that actually was a producer on the um, Haunting in Connecticut, too. Oh, interesting. Mm hmm And he is also working on a movie about Sharon Tate and the Manson oh. 
It's, yeah, Manson's coming up. We're gonna we're gonna have to cover him. Yep, and it'd be fifty years this August. The DeFeo murders will be forty five this November. And again, we this gives us the opportunity to say. What the fuck, 70s? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the... What the actual fuck was going on in the 70s and 60s that caused all of this shit? The serial killer bloat theory. <laughs> and it is a great question. What caused people to go so crazy in the 70s? Was it the drugs? You not, know, I don't not, know. Not everybody, right? True. BTK true. wasn't on drugs. No, he wasn't. I wouldn't be surprised if BTK barely drank on top of it. Right. Um, there's no indication that Bundy was a drug user. True. So, you know, I would, I would see him almost being the type to not do it because he knows that it would make it harder for him to control people, you know? True. Not unlike uh, Manson, how he would feed his family higher doses of lsd than he himself would take right you know all about control so mr dead man says atari video games yeah sorry <laughs> pre pre video game d days <laughs> this is true you can only play and blame okay. it on violent movies in those days yep <laughs> Yeah, at least they weren't trying to blame it on the sexual gyrations of musicians. <laughs> or comic books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they would have blamed Ed Gein's rampage on Elvis the Pelvis corrupting people <laughs> in 1955. Jeez. Mr. Deadman says, I vote Manson for next episode. Yeah. yeah. It's up to you. You want to do that one next, or you want to wait till August gets closer? I'm good either way. Yeah. Um. It, isn't the isn't the Manson show coming out? There is. Uh, like I said, the um, director that I interviewed's movie, The Haunting of Sharon Tate, and then yeah. there's um, Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Right. That is coming out in August, I believe, a week before the anniversary of the murders. They had it on the murders, but then they decided to move it back. Of course, that might also be the um, British release of it, which I never told the listeners, but because I edit the 405.com and it is out of London, we have about 60% of our readers come from the u.s and 40 percent from the uk but because it's out of london i have to include british releases with every movie i put out uh -huh. along with along with the american releases so sometimes there's two dates and all those and i get them a little mixed up <laughs> that's why you write shit down so you don't have to remember yep that's why I write it down and catalog it on our site. Let's see if I can find that while we're talking here. Hey, Dead Man, put a. Let's do it. We should have done a poll for the next uh, next episode. That'd have been fun to do. Hey, definitely. Could get a couple other possibilities there. Yeah. Um, and we can't. It, how do we do that? Can we put it up now, or would we have to? I think Deadman's got to do it. Ah. What other killers would you like us to look at? Um, well, locally. Audience. <laughs> <laughs> locally, we've got Green River Killer. We've got uh, the pig farmers up in B.C. Um, mm hmm Uh... Holmes, you know, the uh, that's an interesting guy mm -hmm. with the murder hotel, murder castle. Yeah. H.H. Um, Holmes. Right. Oh, did you see the news the other day that um, 
Leonardo DiCaprio and Scorsese are working on a Hulu series with Holmes as the main character on The Devil in the White City, the book. Oh, cool. Yep, for Hulu. Yeah, Holmes would be one. Um, you know, there's others. Right. I was going to say we could do the Velisca episode, the Velisca Axe Murders, um, Ed Gein, John Wayne Gacy. The, Dahmer, as Patty says. The, um, oh, the guy, the Australian guy who killed uh, uh, hitchhikers. Yeah, what was his name? What was I remember his name? looking him up before. Hold on. I think he's in my serial killer book here. Uh... No. Oh, Gacy could be interesting. Yeah. The killer clown himself. Although, you know, it might be a good idea to get Ed Gein out of the way um, sooner rather than later, too, because he's largely foundational, I think, to a lot of the others in the way that Jack the Ripper was. Gein was kind of the first really American serial killer in... um, the collective consciousness because of the media. Oh, Ivan Milat. Oh, that's Australian? Yeah. Okay. Or Millet, or however you want to say it. Milat. That's didn't Australian. they do a didn't they do a movie on him? Probably. I thought that one of the um more popular Serial killer movies was taken kind of directly from him. Maybe not. I'm trying to think of what that was now. Ann also suggests Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Tool. Yeah. You could definitely get to them. Absolutely. That one is interesting for, like Butch DeFeo, the um, frequency at which especially Lucas would lie about what went on, because he took credit for, I think it was like 3,000 murders yeah, that were unsolved. And then, of course, Otis Toole was the guy who killed Adam Walsh, John Walsh's boy. Oh, that was O'Toole? That was Otis Toole, yep. O'Toole. Toole, not O'Toole. Yeah, Toole. Otis Toole, who was Henry Lee Lucas's partner. That's another thing. You don't get a whole lot of serial killers who work in tandem like that. Yeah. Which is um, one of the things to speak against the smiley face killers, which is supposedly a gang. Gangs of killers. Yep. Absolutely. Which, for people who haven't watched it, there's a show, I think Oxygen is the network that has it. Something like that. It's on It's on Hulu. It is. And it's basically, the smiley-faced killer theory is these retired cops who are tying all these unsolved or suspicious deaths together under one banner. Yeah, of, um serial killers who might even be a group of serial killers doing it all of all of the victims are college uh aged young men who drown under suspicious uh circumstances yep which or seems like you could statistically determine whether those are anomalies or not Right. Yeah, I still haven't seen any evidence with that where anybody's even tried to do that sort of analysis. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, when they say, God, they, like, <laughs> there are nine young men who drowned in one small area, that seems weird. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't mean, I mean it definitely doesn't mean does. it doesn't mean that there's a serial killer involved at all, but it seems weird. Yeah, 
It definitely is, but like you said, we haven't really established that the way that it's happening is statistical or not. I don't know if anybody's established that. So... Come on, people, vote on the poll. Let's see who you want next. Cause yeah, I wonder how that double exposure happened Well, in the picture that was just up. it. Well, I know how they happened, and it does look like the... Um, well, I know how they happened, too, <laughs> but I'm wondering how that one happened. The second exposure is clearly from the other bedroom. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the village of Amityville. You can't really do double expo exposures with uh, digital cameras. No. Nope. And by definition, you can't. But. Which is kind of too bad, but yeah. yeah. Film photography is a dying art, unfortunately. Film manufacturing is a dying uh, <laughs> industry. <laughs> it is. It definitely is. It's, it's uh, yeah, getting more scarce by the year. All right. Do we got anything else to cover here? You know, I think we pretty well hit this one and covered every little bit of it. All right. Well, thank you for joining the show. And Thank you for stopping by. We will talk to you next week. Hope we didn't give you any nightmares tonight. No, I See didn't. you next week. I hope we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're sadists after all. But daddy will groom you just right. <laughs> Good night. Good night.